This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Wednesday, February 28th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Our top story this afternoon, the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association says it is time that government declares the South Coast sewage challenges a national crisis. The statement from CEO Rudy Grant this morning came as residents and businesses in the area continue to call for urgent action to address the situation. Grant says the BHDA also fears there could be severe consequences for the tourism industry if the matter is not addressed urgently. We appreciate that the BWA is making every effort to remedy the issues, but it would appear that there are a number of additional factors and challenges that are inhibiting them from successfully implementing identified solutions. We truly believe the situation has deteriorated to the point where it is imperative for government to view this as a national crisis as it is affecting residents, schools, businesses and visitors to the island. In this context, we also believe the time has come for a senior government official to take the lead in terms of the day-to-day -day management of this crisis. It is also important for the BHDA to be in a position to be able to respond to the concerns being expressed almost on a daily basis by our trade partners. The BHDA fears that if these challenges are not remedied soon, the end result could prove disastrous for the future of the industry as well as Barbados as an attractive and desired destination. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart says it is not acceptable that only four member CARICOM states have adopted the Caribbean Court of Justice as their final court of appeal. To date, Barbados, Dominica, Guyana and Belize are the only member countries to do so since the official launch in 2005. Stewart was speaking at the CARICOM Intersessional Summit in Haiti and he told the GIS it is a disgrace that more member countries have not adopted the court even as it has been in existence for so long. Stewart says he does not buy the argument that there is a division of opinion in the countries that have not signed on to the to the CCJ as their final appellate jurisdiction and he said he's optimistic that the matter will be addressed at the next CARICOM summit in July and that members would propose more, defi more definitive action to correct the situation. After 13 years, the Barbados Youth Service is set to have its own permanent headquarters. The BYS was uprooted from its home at Harrison's Point in St. Lucie in 2005 following the fire at Glendary Prison. This morning saw the groundbreaking ceremony for the new headquarters at Paragon. Director Halle Haynes said despite the displacement, the youth service has continued to provide a critical program for the island's young people. The Harrison's Point facility has become known as, the prim as one of the primary centers of excellence for youth development in the region. In fact, the Barbados Youth Service was adopted by the then Commonwealth Youth Program Caribbean Center as their best practice for nurturing positive growth and development among our young people. Notwithstanding the challenges of not having a permanent home for the last 12 years, the Barbados Youth Service remained a critical intervention program for hundreds of young people. Police are continuing their search for missing teen Ayasha Madonna Walcott of Drags Hall Jump in St. George. The 17-year-old was last seen by her mother, Cherry Ann Walcott, around 8 o'clock on Sunday morning boarding a transport board bus. She was wearing a short dress and a pair of black slippers. She is 5 feet 8 inches tall, slim, with a light brown complexion. Hair is styled in a single braid and she has a scar on her right ankle. Anyone with information relating to the whereabouts of Ayasha Madonna Walcott is asked to contact the District B police station at 437-4311 or 430-7625. You can also call the police emergency number 211 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477 or the nearest police station. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. The government of Antigua and Barbuda says it has invited regional and international election observers to monitor next month's poll. Prime Minister Gaston Brown says it has invited CARICOM as well as the Commonwealth Secretariat and the Organization of American States. Prime Minister Brown announced the March 21st date at a weekend rally. On the international scene, a prominent seller of guns in the U.S. says it will stop selling assault-style rifles following the recent massacre at a Florida high school. We get the details in this Reuters report. Taking a strong stance in the national gun debate, Dick's Sporting Goods announced Wednesday it was ending sales of all assault-style rifles and high-capacity magazines in their stores. CEO Edward Stack said the new policy also forbids sales of guns to anyone under 21 years of age, regardless of local laws. The nation's largest sports retailer is just the latest company to react in the wake of the Parkland, Florida shooting. Late last week, a number of major corporations, including Hertz, MetLife and Delta Airlines, also publicly cut their ties with the NRA. Survivors of the Parkland massacre have also been lobbying for new restrictions on firearms across the board. Many of them returned to their school on Wednesday for the first time since a gunman killed 17 on Valentine's Day. I'm nervous, but I'm just happy to see everyone come together and support each other. Classes resumed on a half day schedule. The building where most people died, widely known as the freshman building, will remain closed indefinitely and state legislators are considering a bill that would pay to demolish it and replace it with a permanent memorial to the victims. Meanwhile, a makeshift memorial has been growing outside the school with messages of remembrance but also resilience. As many survivors face their fears and return to where the shooting rampage unfolded, accused gunman Nicholas Cruz was due back in court for a hearing to determine whether he has the assets to pay for his own defense. And that's news this afternoon. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Mary Claire Williams. Good afternoon.